Good morning, and welcome to New Life in Christ Ministries. We're located at 895 North Delsey Drive in Malibu, New Jersey, where the pastor is the Honorable Bishop James E. Simmons, Jr. It's the last Sunday in May, and we thank God for that. God is blessing in spite of everything. So at this time, we're going to have prayer from Elder Freddie Alexander, Sr., Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes to your will and yes to your way, Father. As we come before you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise and all the glory that do unto your name, Lord. Father God, anything that we said that was not God, we ask you to forgive us right now in the name of Jesus so that we can be used to you, Lord, as we look unto you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we thank you for our lying down and rising up again. Thank you for a brand new day. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a chance to get it right with you one more time, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the blood covering over our people, both spiritual, natural, and near and full, Lord. Thank you, God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rise up against us in judgment shall be shown to be in the wrong, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father God, that we're able to praise you, able to exalt you, be able to magnify your name, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we have a place to come to, Lord. Thank you for blessing our home, our cars, our jobs, our finances. Thank you, Father God, for blessing our children, our grandchildren, our great grand and all the children around the world, Lord. Father God, we ask a special hedge of attention around the children, Lord. Father God, those that are sick, we ask you to heal them in the name of Jesus. Whatever's wrong, oh, Heavenly Father, we know that we are healed by your strike, Father as we trust in you and lean on our own understanding. But in all our ways, we'll acknowledge you, Father God, and you will direct our path. Father God, we thank you for truly blessing. And G Father God, we ask you to bless First Lady. Father God, touch her body, Lord. Father God, let that high blood pressure, anything else, whatever, God, reduce it, release it right now in the name of Jesus. And let her be used for you, Lord. Father God, we pray for all the people that are sick in mind, body, and soul. We forever give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We do thank you, Elder Alexander, for that prayer. At this time, I'm going to do the vision for New Life in Christ Ministries. You may put your own church in there or your own township or just follow along with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence thanking you for New Life in Christ Ministries. You have called us to be saints in Franklin Township and around the world. As we lift our voices in one accord, we recognize that you are God and everything was made by you and for you. We call into being those things that be not as though they were. We thank you that we all speak the same thing. There is no division among us. We are perfectly joined together in the same mind. Grant unto us your representatives here a boldness to speak your word, which you will confirm with signs following. We thank you that we have workmen in abundance and all manner of cunning people for every manner of work. Each department operates in the excellence of ministry and intercessions. We have in our church the ministry gifts for the edifying of this body till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature person. None of our members will be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. We speak the truth in love. We are a growing and witnessing body of believers. 
becoming great in number and strong. We have every need met. Therefore, we meet the needs of people who come, spirit, soul, and body. We ask for the wisdom of God in meeting these needs. Father, we thank you for the ministry facilities that will more than meet the needs of the ministry. You have called us unto. Our church is prospering financially, and we have more than enough to meet every situation. We have everything we need to carry out your great commission and reach the community for Jesus. We are a people of love, as love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that the Word of God is living big in all of us, and Jesus is Lord. We are a supernatural church composed of supernatural people doing supernatural things. For we are laborers together with God. We thank you for your presence among us, and we lift our hands and praise your holy name. Amen. At this time, we're going to be favored with a selection by Deaconess Inez Simmons. That's 
what I told the storm that I told the storm to pass I said storm you can last said go go away I command you to leave today said storm when God speaks storm you have to cease that's what I that's what I told the storm said I told the storm to the past I said storm you can last said go go away I command you to leave today I said storm when God speaks storm you have to cease that's what I told the storm one more time I said storm you've got to go storm you can last I said go go away I command you command you to leave today I said storm you've got to cease when God speaks you've got to cease that's what I told the storm I told the storm to pass storm you can last you've got to go away When God speaks, storm, you have to leave. That's what I told. It's so I told the storm. today as we look to this time that you we need to hear your word of peace in the land. God, we love you. We praise you. Now let the word of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. We are embarking on a new day. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, I'm hearing some good things. Corona's doing what it's doing, but I think eventually this too shall pass. And uh, we're going to be back and having churches. Uh, here's the thing I want to say, and I, I think it needs to be said. Uh, I, I think this was a time that God showed us 
you know, the, how much fellowship is valued. One, us, we value fellowship, but he also showed us, praise God, that uh, we can still have church without being in the building. What is that telling me? That we are the church. Those that were home, those were at whatever. You could see God hand, my life did not change spiritually because I wasn't here in these four walls. Amen. Matter of fact, I, I felt a, a, a blessed time to this point that God showed himself real because I'm thus so far, praise God, corona free. I believe the family's been kept. God is doing some good things. We've, we've been blessed uh, by food and even with the the time of unemployment, I believe some of those folk that were unemployed were still able to sustain. And, and for those that worked from home, it was time to spend some time with the kids and do some things around the house. So I think, but when the time breaks and we come back together, let's now see all those that miss church. Let's see if you're going to be in church. And then I also want to see how long you're going to stay in church. Not the fact that coming to church, he that endureth until the end. Don't come out a Sunday or two or three Sundays. I remember when 9-11, all the churches were packed for a minute. Then people get back in that same old mindset. They go back fishing and doing what they do on Sunday mornings. So I want to talk a little bit about what I see here and why now I'm going to say something that might be hard, but it's it's what I see. I see the protesting. I see all that's going on. I'm going to go back to 1986, 87, 88. We marched. I remember the buses. I remember uh, the young lady who would not give up her seat. I, I can see different things that had transpired. So you tell me how in the world could we still be doing all this marching, burning, and all this in the year 2020. Now, it was in 1960s. We did what we did. Uh, and now I'm looking at 2020, just about the closure. And we're still doing the same thing. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you what, we, they did some burning back then, but I mean, my God, I've seen so many police cars burn, praise God, that, and, and this is the first time I've ever seen a precinct burn. They burnt the house of the policeman. They, I mean, now it's getting cr critical when you start burning the house of the man, you know. We're telling you, we don't need you at all. We'll burn your house. When you burn my house, that's telling me to move. If you burn my house, that's telling me to move. I, I'm, I'm looking at this. And, and I'm going to say this, church, uh, there's something that I believe we're missing. I believe there's something missing. You, you're not going to change a man's heart. God's got to do that. You can burn his house. You can do whatever. But if his reality is what it is, if I don't like you, I don't get what you do to me. I don't like you. And they're going to do the same thing, man. I'm telling you. Unless God changed the hearts of people, that's the only way it's going to change. We can, we can do what we do. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something, young people. Praise God. Uh, I've seen a lot. I was stuck in traffic in Philadelphia yesterday. And uh, I would honestly say 50% uh, or if not more of the people that was running in that, uh, that crew, the protest, really didn't fully understand what was going on. I'm saying that, and, and do I have the right? Yeah, that's what I saw, and I'm speaking now from my heart. A lot of people are doing stuff, and, and they don't really realize what we're really dealing with. Amen. A man died. I, I'm going to sh share this with you. Back in the 1800s and even into the 1900s, we have one of our elders that uh, shared something with me from Alabama. He, they, they saw the horses riding in the sheets and the burning of the cross, and they're still doing it, right? So you tell me if, if, if that was going on then and it's still going on, all the civil rights laws, all the stuff that's being said, all the different things on news, 
you wouldn't you think? Glory to God. And, and instead of going forward, this is me. From what I saw on that film when that man, uh, that man had his uh, knee in that man's, on that man's neck, that man looked like he was in a whole nother world, like he was getting ready to order a pizza or something. He, and that's how concerned he was about his knee in that man's neck. He had his hand in his pocket like he was ready to get change and get ready to call uh, go, go, uh, da, DoorDash or one of us to come bring him a meal. He was not, I saw no expression on his face as far as what he was doing. And I'm going to tell you this. I believe there's a lot of folk out there like that. I, I, I hey, on all different colors. You're not going to tell me that you're going to change a man's heart by protesting. You might make him concerned. A lot of folk is concerned. But you, you got to change the heart of a man. The only way that's going to happen is that individual has to say within himself, I want to change. I repent. I repent. If a man don't repent, uh, I, I'm going to do some just a little. I'm not going to be before you long. But uh, this, thing, this thing bothered me because I, w I, I, I was in the 60s. I was there. I saw uh, Dr. Martin Luther King get shot as far as on the news and what have you. And different things are coming up that he didn't die from the shot. They suffocated and whatever. He, he's dead. But one thing I noted that Dr. Mo Dr. Martin Luther King did, he never once preached retaliation. Never once. That man never. He saw something that I think we need to, to see. You ain't going to win this war by doing, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that would exalt it itself against the knowledge of God. Now, you see, I, remember, I, I, I memorize that because I keep telling myself, Simmons, you ain't going to win with physical weapons. You ain't going to burn a car down. You ain't going to do this without God weapons, which a lot of folk out there did not have. You can email me whatever you want to do. I really don't care right now because I'm at an age and this whole thing that I've seen it. And what I'm seeing, it ain't changing much. And a lot of us can say amen to that. Uh, for those that lived back in that era, to those that are living now, it hadn't changed much. Amen. That's why God's coming back. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to use for thought. I'm going to be coming out of the book of... Uh, Matthew, and uh, I'm going to read out of the book of Matthew, and then I'm going to read a few things out of my book here, still dealing with uh, Dr. Uh, Fran Frigapain, because he said some things that definitely need to be said. And this is in the fifth chapter, I mean the uh, eighth chapter of the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter, I believe I'm right, uh, the eighth chapter, uh, starting at the fifth verse. And this is the, heal, the Jesus healed the centurion's servant. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came uh, to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is, is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion uh, answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. But only, but only speak a word. Speak a word. Speak a word. And my servant will be healed. In the book of Psalms, he sent his word to heal us. For I am, for I also am a man under authority having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servants, do this, and do that, and do it, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, surely I say unto you, I have not found such faith. Not even in Israel. Now, you also got to keep in mind, his apostles were with him also. 
He said he, that that's profound. Uh, was it a, a a a unique statement? I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say unto you, many will come from the east, the west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven. I want also just to highlight that a little bit. We're going to be sitting down talking to Abraham and Isaac and them. We're going to be sharing some good stuff. I don't think he's going to be talking about uh, the problem he had with uh, his concubine and what have you. I think we're going to be sharing some good stuff. Amen. Uh, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out unto outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. I, I'm going to, um, I want to highlight that. As you believe, let it be done unto you. I want to use, and I'm going to use with uh the, the same subject that uh, Dr. Fran Frigopan, I'm using his book again, the, coming out of chapter 15, The War Over Reality. The War Over Reality, that's what I'm using for thought. Uh, same thought he had, the war over reality. Created in the image of God, man was given limited yet distinct inherent powers. He was granted the power to imagine as well as the faculties to define and then establish reality. And, operate, and operating within the boundaries presented by God, man does this for better or for worse, according to the free selection of his will. As we understand this, we see that the essence of spiritual warfare is in who shall define reality, the Word of God or the illustrations of this present age. And that's what we're dealing with. Who is defining reality? I'm going to give you the define the definition for reality. Reality is how does life appear to you? How does life appear to you? The definition defines reality as that which is real, an actual thing, situated, or event. Situation, I mean, uh, actual thing, situation, actual thing, situations, or events. Such is reality in terms of objective, objective analysts. But reality is not just objective. There is also subjective or personal sides to reality which is rooted in our feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. Now, I'm going to share, share something with you. That's a fact. If I was brought up in a prejudiced environment, if, I, if, if the word I heard was a Negro, but I heard nigger, if I was in a home that I didn't hear white folk, I heard cracker. If I was brought up in a home where I saw or was taught to see a person the way I was taught to see them, guess how I'm going to see you? Amen. I, I can remember I was taught uh, glory to God, certain nationalities don't trust them because they get you. I can use this term because I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. I can remember back, glory to God, I was taught they'll Jew you down. Why do you Jew me down? What's the Jew me down? That means, man, they'll get you. I was taught that Puerto Ricans, all Puerto Ricans carry the knife. They'll cut you. Puerto Ricans, if, if it's a Puerto Rican, he'll cut you. Amen. I was taught that the white man was going to keep you down. That was his premise. His premise was to keep you down. Italians love pasta. That's all they ate. That's what I was taught. Irishmen love potatoes. <laughs> Black man watermelon, 
fried chicken, and chitlins. And don't throw me a collard green with a ham hock or a neck in it. So this was my reality. I grew up in a home, praise God, where we did not have running water. We did not have running water. I was in South, I was in the South, South New Jersey, and uh, Southern New Jersey. I was in the South, Southern New Jersey. And, and we did not have indoor plumbing. Uh, and I was taught to go out and, and get your water and get your wood because we did not have a furnace. We burnt wood in a pot belly stove. My reality was when I came home from school, even before I did my homework, I went out and got wood. And I made sure water was in the house because my dad was very strict about when he got home, he wanted to see water in that pail. So he can dip the dipper in and drink and pour a glass, whatever. That was my reality. Amen. That's what, I, that's what was real to me. Amen. And as I grew... Now, this was also the thing that blessed me. I was able to go out into a world and experience different things. But I had to make a choice. I had to either change or adjust my realities or what I saw, or I stayed with it. I, there was one saying, and I'll never forget it, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I don't know if any of y'all, that's an old people saying. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And so, and some of that, it locked me into an ignorant state. I, amen. Uh, because of the way I was, I was taught and brought up uh, to a point, I, I never felt uh, that I had the intelligence to do things. My intellectual ability, I, was, I felt as though I was hampered. Because of my color. Not because I was, but because that's what I saw. Uh, my dad had a third grade education. He couldn't read or write. Mama had a sixth grade education, and she did the best she could. And now, now to hear my mom, because she reads the Bible, you think she's a college grad. Uh, but I, I never thought of college. College was never on my plate. I could not even fathom college. College. College for people that got money and smart. I'm not smart for college. I'm not smart enough for college. So I never put that in my agenda of things. And so what that did, did that cripple me? Yeah, it, it did. But it also showed me that I limited myself by what I thought I knew. That makes sense. That's what I thought I knew. And really, in actuality, that's what I, that was my reality. That's where I grew up. Now, I'm, I'm going to share something with you here. So you see... This, uh, I want to go on. In, in the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, uh, now I, I shared this with my wife, and I want y'all, yeah, you please, you can write in or say, uh, call me or something. It's, I keep rehearsing this over and over in my head that there's something going on in this spiritual realm of darkness. The devil ain't no joke. Don't play him cheap. You got Adam and Eve in the garden. They walked with God. They, God came and talked with them in the cool of the day. Adam, how you doing? Oh, God, I'm doing great. How you? Look, I want to give you a little bit more knowledge, wisdom, understanding. As a matter of fact, I, here's your job for tomorrow. Go name all the animals. God said, just name them. Lord, well, how, no, you, I'm telling you, by my word, and I'm implanting in you the ability, go name the animals. Adam went out there and named all the animals. Dog, cat, rabbit, snake. That brother naming them, boy. Glory to God. Even named Eve in the interim. You are called Eve, the woman. Glory to God. Now, if I'm, I'm here looking at this, and that brother and sister, glory to God, was with, saw God in the cooler day. And the devil was subtle enough to deceive them. Who are we kidding? Hoodwinked them. Totally hoodwinked them. Over, over something to eat. That's how come we got to watch our appetites. Over something to eat. Don't, uh, God said, now out of all the trees, don't eat from that one tree. 
And the devil hoodwinked them and confused them with what, and all Eve and Adam had to do. Wait a minute, Satan, I hear you. Let me go ask God. Oh, God, that was revelation knowledge. Before you go out there and start saying what you think you're saying, go back to the Word. What did the Word say? So they could have went back and said, God, here's what this snake was saying. And God, you know what God would have did? First of all, he would have rebuked the snake because he would have told Adam, you got the authority to kick him out the garden. What's he doing in the garden? Kick him out. But Adam and Eve, what'd they do? Bam. Thank God for a plan. All these people, I'm looking at Adam and Eve, 190, 100, 930 years Adam, uh, 920 years Seth, 969 uh, years Methuselah. Do you know how many people was, was being generated over that course of time? Not 900 years, one man living, glory to God. Now, check this out. How in the world could all these people be deceived except for eight people? Eight people was the only ones that got on that ark. Now, I know, I know Adam, I mean, uh, Noah wasn't saying, nobody's allowed on this ark but us, my four, no more. Yeah, that's right, my four, no more, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> Nobody else allowed on this ark, we're the only ones. No, you had an evil deceptive, crazy generation of folk. How did the devil hoodwink all them people, man? Am I right about it? And so we're sitting up here thinking, and you're in all the protests and all this stuff. You better ask God, Lord, should I walk in this march? And if I'm walking in this march, what should I be saying? And, and who should I be congregating with? And who should I be writing stuff on the police car about? I would have felt better if somebody said, I love the Lord. They're writing all kinds of profanity and dumb stuff. And, and we're looking at it. I'm looking like, my God, holding up signs. Better good. Jesus saved. The Lord is coming back. He loves his people. We're holding up signs. God, oh, God, then I'll help me in this world. Do you think... God is in that. I don't care what we think or what we say. I know the word. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That's what Jesus said. I know I ain't feel like praying for that police officer. If I was there, I'd hit him with, well, maybe not because he had a gun. <laughs> I wouldn't have hit him. I'd been standing there like the rest of them. Say, get your hand, get your knee off his neck <laughs> like the rest of them. He had a gun. And if I had a gun, he'd have shot me. And I think the color had a little bit to do with it, but he shot me anyhow. Now, we look, we're looking at this thing, man. This is what God is saying. Glory to God. Get from among the be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be ye separate. That's what I'm hearing from God right now. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. What did he say? Glory to God. I believe, I believe, if there was enough Holy Ghost power in that place, somebody would have cast that devil out of that white man. Satan, in the name of Jesus, get your neck, your knee off that man's neck. I bind you. I believe right now if somebody had a said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I'm hearing in the background all kinds of profanity. Get your knee off his neck. Beep, 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 beep. Somebody had a yelled out, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you right now. That man might be still living. And the other man might have got saved. That was powerful, man. That's powerful. But we're seeing, glory to God, that the reality of people, the hearts of people, that's why Jesus came. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. We're living in a lost, a lost, I'm going to say it again, a lost world. This world, glory to God, the coming up, our president is in his own world. 
I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, Crystal. I don't know. Yeah, he is. He's allowed to. He's in his own world. Because we're in our own world. We're all, we're all in our own world. We need to get into the kingdom. Glory to God. And here's what the Lord said. Oh, my God, my time. Yeah, I had a little time. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people, and they have one language. And this is the only, my God. Look at this here. God's given me revelation knowledge in this church. Y'all got to stay with me. The Lord said, behold, they are one people, and they have one language. And this is, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they can imagine they can do will be, nothing will be impossible unto us, unto them. They have one, look, one people. You got folk that are, I don't care if you're Chinese, Japanese, or I don't care what you are. That you, you, your nationality or your race does not separate you from being a darkness-minded one people. I don't care who you are. I heard one of the news commentators saying, look, at the, they were all different color. Yeah, they were one people, one mind. It wasn't going out. God, I wish somebody heard that. He was trying to justify, it's not just black folk. There was a bunch of lost folk. Now, some people, there's some saved folk, I, but saved for God. Do you know when Dr. Martin Luther King marched, they prayed, they were walking arm in arm. Uh, I don't remember not one police car burning. I think they would have killed them back then fast. I didn't see no, no, the, uh, Elder, he was with me. I, I mean, back, how many was back in that, that era? James, y'all wasn't even born. Uh, but they didn't burn nothing. They just kept marching and kept working. And, and that man said, I had a dream. I believe the dream he saw, glory to God, wasn't here on this earth. That's me. Even though young black men and women and, and white women and all them walking together, glory to God. But I believe when that man had that vision, God said, man, it ain't here. I don't care what y'all say. It ain't here. It's not here. People ain't changing. No, they're not. They're not changing much unless they get saved. They, that same mindset, this world mindset is no good, man. The devil's up there laughing. He, I don't want to tell you something. You don't, you don't know it for those that know it and for those that don't know it. That whole incident was spiritually induced. The devil was behind it all. He had, he's got demonic forces over every city. And they dictate. They tell. They look, look, let me tell you. I, I heard an individual say, well, people was hurt. A lot of people was hurt. My God, I want to tell you what's hurt. You want me to tell you what's hurt? When we're in that white throne judgment line, and you're going to be going to hell forever. You, you ain't going nowhere else. You're going to hell. Straight up. Ain't no change. Ain't no, oh, glory to God. No. Now that's hurt. And we as the born again believing church gonna be looking at a lot of folk that we know going into that, that forever hell line. That's hurt. I pray God that 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 brother was saved. Glory to God. I know this is a hard message, church. I'm telling you, speaking somewhat out of my heart and out of the word, what God has laid in my spirit. And here's what He laid. Now I'm gonna tell you what's hurt. Son of God stretched out as far as they could stretch him. Beat him as long as they could beat him. Bleeding profusely from every area. Crown of thorns on his head. Glory to God. He stretched high. Hung, glory to God, naked. And they got the nerve to put, uh, behold, king of the Jews on this, on this placard. And he's standing up there and then being, now he had the authority to call angels. One legion of angels would have destroyed the, the universe. Not just the world. It would have destroyed the universe. And he stayed on that cross, stayed up there with all the ridicule, if you be the son of God, come down. And he stayed up there for us. I'm going to tell you, church, I'm not going to let that stand up there being vain for me. 
I don't care what this world does. That's me. That's, that's on me. Because I only got so long on it. Glory to God. This world, is somebody used the expression going to hell in a handbasket. But I'm going to tell you what, this world's getting worse, man. It is. I don't care what. I was born 1950. And what I've seen and what I'm seeing, glory to God, it was no, when that man had his knee on that man's neck and them three other individuals standing around, they should have just threw a rope around a tree, hung him up, and stretched him up. Wasn't no different, really. They killed him. The only difference was the world could see it. <laughs> the, world, the world looked like, yeah, man. And I believe it's not just happening there. It's happening all over. And I don't believe it's just white folk doing it, black folk doing it too. Try everybody. They get their part. White folk are beating, uh, black folk are beating white folk when they get a chance. Beat them to death. Amen. Black folk, uh, we rode past a wall in Philadelphia of the ones that were violently killed uh, this year. The wall was full of names. Then they had on there the top, rest in peace. I pray God somebody rest in peace. But they had a, a wall of names of individuals that, in Philadelphia that were violently killed. We don't think about that sometimes. We don't think about, you know, we should be marching against ourselves sometimes. You know, we need to stop killing one another. Amen. Amen. We get mad when the white man call us nigger, and we call him one another more niggers than he'll ever call us. Young folk, pants half well down their butt bone, and they talking nigger. That's my nigger. No, 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 no. See, if it's, if it's good for one, it better be good for the other. I, I don't care what you say. You, it's just a slang. Slang hurts. Glory to God. We need to stop, man. And the only way you're going to stop, you're going to look up and say, Father, forgive me. I've sinned, man. I don't know what I'm doing. Lost my mind. So I need the, the mind of Christ. We need to repent. Father, forgive me, for I know not what I do. Glory to God. Save me. We need to cry out from the white house to the little house. Lord, save us. President should be hands up. Lord, forgive me. Man, I lost my mind. He said something. I, I'm the only one that can do it. President Trump, you're far from the only one that can do it. Jesus has already done it. What you said you're the only one that can do, Jesus has already done it over 2,000 years ago. So ain't what you can do. Don't ask glory to God. If God don't do it, it won't be done. That's a fact, man. That's to all of us, all the governors, all the mayors, all of us, all the senators. Glory to God, all the congressmen. I'm fighting for you. No, you better fight for you. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. Church, I, I, you, you see it. You see it in me, man. It's in me. Because I realize the only way this world's going to change that they get, glory to God, in accord with the Word of God. I don't care what religion you are. Get what religion you are. And I don't, whatever religion you are, whoever you're following, they better be somewhere where you want to be. Because if you're following an individual and they ain't where you want to be, you ain't going to be able to do much to them when you get there. Now, that's the truth, man. I'm this. Well, whoever your leader is, Glory to God, well, you're going to be surprised when you look at you and say, man, I took the wrong turn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry ain't going to cut it. When you look at that white throne judgment line and they're going to be standing in there with you, that's going to be a bad time to say, what in the world? I thought, you, I thought. Reading in, in, the, in the book of St. John, 14th chapter, and, and uh, Thomas said, Lord, how do we know the way? And Jesus said something that will always stick in the hearts and minds of God's people. Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the way. And I'm, I'm going to go with that, man. And I'm going to go with that first verse, the first chapter of St. John. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you, and where I am, go right to God. There you will be also. That's the resting part for me. God, I pray for a country, I pray for a world that needs you. Burning cars, burning down targets, and ram racking and shacking. Glory to God, ain't going to bring that man back. It, it sure is. What it's doing is it's validating the hatred. It's validating hatred. It's validating the devil's doing just what he wants to do, kill, steal, and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God, we love you and we praise you. We ask, God, that you look over us, keep us. Those that are not saved, get saved. Say this with me, praise God, if you're not saved. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent. I repent. I ask you to forgive me for all my sin. I believe that Jesus died. I believe he rose again on the third day for me. I believe he was buried and rose again. I, I don't just make him my Savior. I make him my Lord and my Savior. I'm asking you to send the Holy Spirit in my life to lead and guide me and to direct me into all truth and righteousness. I'm going to say this, Father, for, for, for the world. Forgive them for they know not what they do. When Jesus was up there, and I can understand why he said that, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If I could use for a second thought, Father, forgive us for we know not what we do. For this, God, we give you the praise. Give us the wisdom, knowledge, understanding of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, send a peace that surpasses understanding. But touch the hearts and minds of people, the soul, the will, the emotion, the intellect, so they can rightly divide the word of truth. And the only way they can do it is by getting into the word. Either you're going to stand for the word or you're going to stand for the world. You're either going to stand for the word or you're going to stand for the word. world. And God, I'm going to stand for your word. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path for the interest of your word give it light. For this I give you the praise, I give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless the church and the smile upon you. I pray, God, that we said something. We They didn't beat me. I, I think some of the words could have been beat, but Crystal didn't beat, so we're good. God love you. Have a smile upon you. Amen. And please get on the prayer line. Crystal. Get on the prayer line. I'm looking at these numbers dropping. Glory to God. Y'all get on the prayer line. You need prayer. We need prayer. Glory to God. Get in Sunday school. And don't, don't just say, you know, well, because that's giving me an indication when the church opens where your head's at anyhow. So glory to God. You know the deal. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Crystal, we're still there. God bless you. You can take this home. Glory to God. We're going we're gonna to go home.